encouraging or advising anyone to modify their firearms. This is not a tutorial. This is for entertainment purposes only. What's up, everyone? What if you buy a cheap 1911 or 2011 and out of the box, it's got a nasty like five and a half or six pound trigger and you just want to get that pull weight down a little bit. What I will show in this video is the two easiest ways to do that. Don't expect this to be as easy as swapping out a striker spring or some parts on your Glock. It's not. And the trigger's still going to suck for a 1911, but at least it won't be six pounds. It is a very non-trivial task to get a good trigger out of a 1911. It takes skill, experience, practice, and a deep understanding of this mechanical system. Once again, I threw in my standard cover my own ass disclaimer, but this is indeed a tutorial. This is not a cheap 1911 and it has a great trigger because I just did a trigger job on it. However, it's the 1911 I'm currently working on, so I will be using it for demonstrative purposes. I just posted a video showing my process for a complete trigger job on this pistol and an in-depth video on firearm component polishing. That is outside the realm of what most people would likely do or feel comfortable doing, but check those out if you're interested in more information or where additional improvements can be made. Links are in the description. I wouldn't try to adjust your trigger weight any lower than about three pounds using the methods I'm about to show in this video. If you want a trigger lower than three pounds or you're not comfortable doing the things I'm about to show, take it to a gunsmith. As always, before doing any work on any firearm, make sure the firearm is unloaded, safe and clear, and there's no ammo or magazines in your work area. Let's get into it. Tools you're going to need, hammer and punch set for disassembling and reassembling the pistol, and a trigger pull weight gauge. This is not necessary, but it's really helpful. Let's start with the main spring, which is also called the hammer spring. This is the spring that compresses when the hammer is cocked and then it forces the hammer forward into the firing pin when the trigger is pulled. The main spring lives in the main spring housing right here. You can see the hammer strut compressing it into the main spring housing as I cock the hammer. This upward force from the mainspring puts pressure on your sear and hammer interface and affects trigger weight. These are like $4 standard weight for this spring and the 1911 is 23 pounds. If you want a three to three and a half pound trigger, I would get a 19 pound mainspring above three and a half pounds, a 21 pound mainspring. Sub three pound triggers can get into that 17 pound mainspring range. Sub two pound triggers may use a 15 pound mainspring. Others may have different ideas about what mainspring weight is best for desired trigger weight, but this is just what has been working good for me. Again, we aren't considering sub three pound triggers in this video, so my recommendation is a 19 or 21 pound mainspring. I have adjusted a trigger down to three pounds with a standard 23 pound mainspring, and it felt okay. Replacing the mainspring is not necessary to adjust the trigger, but it will help maintain a positive reset at lower trigger weights. I'll explain this more in the sear spring adjustment section. I'm also going to link to a video showing the complete disassembly and reassembly of a 1911 style pistol. That video will show you how to get this mainspring replaced. Right now, I have a 21 pound mainspring in this pistol and the sear spring is adjusted to a trigger weight of about five pounds. Now I will install a 19 pound mainspring without touching the sear spring and see how much that affects the trigger pull weight. Okay, dropped it maybe a half a pound. So if you just want to drop your trigger weight by replacing the main spring and not adjusting the sear spring, maybe that's what to expect. If you started with a 23 pound main spring and dropped it down to 19, it might drop the trigger pull weight a pound. Let's look at sear spring adjustment. This tang is for your grip safety. This one pushes the sear into engagement with the hammer and has a small effect on trigger break weight. The center leaf or tang has the greatest effect on trigger break weight. This is the one we will be adjusting. I will link to a great video by Atlas Gunworks talking about sear spring adjustment and tuning. Again, check out the disassembly and assembly video to see how to get this guy in and out of your pistol. I'll also briefly touch on that in the end of this section. The middle tang of that leaf spring does not just affect the weight of the trigger break. It also controls how much force is needed 
to pull the trigger up to the wall or the weight of the take up. It also pushes the trigger back forward to reset the trigger, so the adjustment of that middle tang will affect the positivity of the trigger reset. If you want a heavier take up, break, and more positive reset, you bend this middle tang forward. If you want a lighter take up and trigger break, you bend it back, but the reset will be less positive. If you have a heavier mainspring, let's say 21 or 23 pounds, and you want the trigger weight to be lower, you have to adjust this tang further back than you would with a lighter mainspring. That means that the takeup will be lighter and the reset will be less positive. This really comes down to preference of how you want the takeup and reset to feel. I personally like a little stiffer takeup and a more positive reset, so I drop my mainspring weight down and adjust this tang a little bit further forward. It's up to you. I hope this gives you an idea of the interaction of sear spring adjustment and mainspring weight. Well, let's say I want this trigger to be 3.5 pounds. I don't know if I could do that again if I tried. I got really lucky. That's about three and a half pounds. A little adjustment can make a big difference in trigger pull weight. Um, generally, the procedure for this is test your trigger pull weight, take your sear spring out, make a little adjustment, reinstall it, test it again. If it's not quite there, pull it out, make a little bit more of an adjustment, put it back in, retest, and so on. Also, these sear springs sometimes have a bit of memory, and if the spring was set for a really heavy trigger, you can expect the trigger weight to creep back up maybe half to three quarters of a pound with some use, and it will need to be readjusted. This has happened to me multiple times. The easiest and quickest way to get this done, beaver tail grip safety out, thumb safety out. Uh, when you're testing trigger pull weight, you want to have the slide on the pistol so the hammer hits the firing pin instead of smacking forward into the frame. Quickly get the sear spring out, drop your hammer down. You don't need to install your mainspring housing pin all the way, hammer all the way forward. You can generally just pull this pin out, slide your mainspring housing out, and then pull your leaf spring out. Make your adjustment with the hammer forward, flip your hammer strut up out of your way, put the sear spring in, and we have to make sure that this leaf is on the back of our disconnector and this leaf right here is on the back of our sear. Slide your mainspring housing in to partially retain that sear spring. Flip your hammer strut down. Sometimes you gotta wiggle the hammer strut around to get it in the pocket of the mainspring plunger. Put your pin back in part way to retain it. Cock your hammer. Put your slide back in, hold it in place, take your trigger pull weight measurement and repeat. After doing anything like this, we need to safety check the pistol. I made a video on this, I'll link in the description. We didn't change the relationship between the sear and the hammer. We didn't adjust the leaf that forces the sear into engagement with the hammer hooks and we didn't adjust the trigger so light, you know, below about three pounds that it would cause issues. So we should not have any problems, but you've always got to check anyways. I hope you have a good idea of how sear spring adjustment and the main spring affect trigger weight in action, and you can get the trigger weight lowered a little bit on your budget 1911 or 2011 style pistol after watching this video. If you're comfortable adjusting the sear spring but not replacing the main spring, then just do that. Maybe you just want to replace the main spring and not touch the sear spring. Maybe you're comfortable doing both. If you're not comfortable doing either, then don't. Take it to a gunsmith. Stay safe, wear your safety glasses, safety and function check any firearm after doing any work to it. Leave any outstanding questions 
and share your tips and tricks for adjusting 1911 triggers in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.